being part of this. Thank you for all you do to make this happen for all of us. But My pleasure. What we all really want to know is, what the heck are you doing here? Ah, <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> so, first of all, um, I am, well, today at the grand opening, Yes. and then every Wednesday I'll be offering something I call Everything Psychic Readings. Oh, explain. Explain. <laughs> uh, so, I started doing professional psychic readings in the 70s. That's not possible. You're only yeah, 29. I, I know, you know. Um, Time travel. It is. I have a TARDIS parked in the back lot for those of you who recognize the reference. Uh, yeah, so I've been doing professional psychic readings since the late 70s, and then I've had a full-time spiritual practice as a spiritual catalyst for 33 years now. Uh, and so... You know, for a long time, people would say, what, what do you do? And I used to say, I don't know. Whatever you need is what I do. Sit down, shut up, and we're going to see what you need to know. Uh, but, you know, people like all these label picky things. And it's like, well, do you talk to dead people? I said, well, dead people talk to me. I said, it's like, yeah, I talk to dead people. Well, can you see the future? Well, the future's not in granite, but I can tell you what's going to happen in the steps you're taking. I can also tell you what steps you might want to shift or bring in more. And then they say, well, can you tell me about past? Yeah, I can tell you about past. So after a while, I just said, you know what? It's everything psychic. When I get into a space with somebody, I ask for whatever information is in their highest and best good. And once I've done that, then I open up, and then the flow comes. Uh, and because my primary practice now is a spiritual catalyst, I warn people, you get homework. Because, you know, I know there are people out there I know that who use the psychic ability to amaze, to tell you things that you already know about yourself but they couldn't possibly know, and that, I'm not saying that never happens. But the real power to psychic, which is gonna lead into the first class I'm teaching actually, to me, the real power of psychic is to give people more information with which to make better decisions. And so when I give you more information and I may tell you something and you go, how do you know that? And I'm notorious at this point because I'm old and grumpy. Uh, and I have been called the psychic <laughs> sledgehammer. Literally, I had a reporter call me the psychic sledgehammer. That's accurate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, is I'm like, you know, people go, oh, how did you know that? You, you know what? You didn't pay me to be bad. Shut up and listen. Here's what Spirit wants you to know. I want you to think about this. This is what you need to work on. I, I need you to be aware of this is what's coming up or things like this. Uh, especially because I work as a medical intuitive. And I always tell people, though I'm a doctor, I'm not a medical doctor, I cannot diagnose, I cannot prescribe. And any and all information I get is intuitive in nature. But when I tell somebody that, and then get a piece of health information for them and remind them that it's intuitive, my perspective, um, it, it has made differences, huge differences in how people's health journey unfolds. Oh, you gave me a great peace of mind when they last time they were trying to kill me. And yeah. like, There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> and you were right. I was like, you're not, they're not going to kill you, baby. They keep uh, trying. But... No, no. So uh, that leads to the first class. I am teaching a intro to psychic development class. Excellent. Um, I've been teaching that class for 32 years now. I have actually, over those 32 years, uh, taught the class all over Europe and the U.S., I've had people that have gone on and done advanced psychic work to me who now are full-time psychic readers. Um, it depends on what, why, why you want your psychic, what do you want to do with it. But in this particular class, we go over what is psychic, kind of what are the cosmic laws, what do you need to be aware of, where can you run afoul. But we spend about 75% of the class with actually playing with different psychic abilities. So you can kind of... Yeah, dabble. Right. Dabble. Wasn't that the word we heard earlier? Yeah, when you said dabble. And so in that, it is about, you know, where do your psychic talents most lie? What are, where are you most naturally gifted? Because that's always a good place to start and then expand. Right. So I am teaching the Intro to Psychic Development class. 
And then I am teaching a developing your spiritual business class. That I find amazing because you really can't find many classes anywhere that teach you how to develop a spiritual business correctly. And so um, I've been asked to teach this class many times. I haven't taught it for a long time. Uh, but 8-8, eight, eight, eight to me, uh, you know, being here at Lionsgate, 8-8. Eight, 8-8 eight. Eight, eight is also the number that's associated with the business of spirituality and the spirituality of business. Uh, and in fact, one of the books that I'm currently, uh, I say currently working on, there's a lot of them, uh, is I interviewed a lot of very successful business people about what was, the, what was it in their soul that led them to create a successful business. Mm -hmm. And these are not people that were in spiritual businesses. Right, right. These were people that were another kind. Because I also have done consulting for years for traditional businesses. Yes. And um, so I'm doing the spiritual, uh, building your business spiritual, uh, building your spiritual business uh, class, and then I'm gonna do a class on ghosts. So. What's now, what's that one about? Yeah. Come on. Well, <laughs> ghost, uh, the ghost class, um, I interacted with my first ghost when I was eight. I cleared my first ghost when I was 19. Um, and I have done ghost clearings again all over Europe and the US. What do you mean by clearing? Clearing is helping a ghost heal and returning them to their incarnational cycle. I absolutely despise ghost hunter shows. I was approached uh, about being on a ghost hunter show and I wouldn't do it because the ghost hunters go and find them and then leave them trapped. And I feel that that's out of integrity because a ghost is somebody who has not moved on for a reason. And in uh, all of my years of doing, working with ghosts and trapped spirits and stuff like this, it to me always compares to if you found a child in a cage, would you leave the child in a cage and sell tickets for people to look at them? Or would you open the cage and set them free? And these people that go and do ghost hunting and find the ghost and then lead tours to show other people the ghost and to have evidence of the ghost instead of clearing the ghost and letting them return to their incarnational cycle, I feel is an atrocity. And I have said this for decades. So in my ghost class, I'm gonna talk about what a ghost is, what a ghost isn't, how not to become a ghost because their ghosts are created every day. There are people that get trapped and don't know how to move on. Uh, and so I clear up a lot of that stuff. And then whatever time we have left, I tell ghost stories. Real life ghost stories of ghosts that have cleared. That's gonna be over Halloween weekend. Oh, perfect. So that's what I'm doing here. So where do we find your schedule? And You should be able to find it on Lionsgate, uh, lionsgatespiritual.com uh, is the website here. Uh, you can come into Lionsgate and they can tell it, or you can always come to uh, my Dr. Kevin, and if you're on my mailing list as well, you will always get notified of any classes I'm teaching anywhere. Excellent, excellent. And just so you know, Lori is also here doing readings today, and we're gonna be talking to Lori in a little bit about the kind of reading she does and the classes that she's teaching. But Lori is also the co-host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show once a month with me. And she was my co-host on my Web of Light TV show that I had for three years, uh, weaving a web of light in the world. So when it was my time to get interviewed, this was my first choice. <laughs> Namaste. Uh, do I have any questions? I am open to taking questions. Okay, great. <laughs>